It is an honor to be up here today. It's been a while since I've been up here. And I do not take it lightly. I, uh, I give honor to our pastor and his wife today. I give high, high honor to them. Such good people. I love serving under them. I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you for all that y'all do for the kingdom of God. This church is blessed with a great pastoral staff. Ryan and Shy, I'm extremely excited to have you guys on board. This is incredible. I know everyone else is as well. But today, <clears throat> I come with a word. Let me tell you something. I know I'm not a great preacher. I understand that. There's many in this room that are far better Bible scholars and preachers than myself. And I wrestled with God on this, but you know what? I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost so strong. And God, I just ask you right now to move in this service. Lord, I believe the word today. Your word is anointed. And Lord, I ask you to anoint my lips. I hear from you. I hear. And I'm going to ask you, if you will, to get behind me today. I'm going to ask you to get behind me today. Can you do that? It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's December the 29th. It's Sunday. We just have a few more days left of this year. It's hard to believe. It's really hard to believe. 2020 is approaching. It's approaching very, very fast, but I'm not here today to talk to you about the new year. It would be easy. Trust me, I thought about it. That would be an easy message, an uplifting message. Pastor has a great vision for 2020, and I know he's excited about sharing that with you soon. But I want to ask you a question today. What are you going to do with the few days that you have left here in 2019? What are you going to do with these next few days? Are you just going to move on and forget 2019 as it never happened? Try to put all your troubles behind you? I want to help some of us today with our perspective. My title today is going to be Eternal Perspective. It's going to be a little different. I'm not starting out with the scripture this morning. But I'm going to ask each of you to get behind me today. I'm going to ask each of you because I believe I've got a word for not just one. I believe many in this room. I know that I have heard from God and it has changed my heart in this message. And I believe that when you leave this place today, God is going to do something mighty in your life. Lord, I just pray one more time over this word. God, I pray that we will change our mindset. You will change our perspective to eternal perspective. You will give us a clear vision, God, of what we are doing on this earth and why we are here what our purpose is. God, I just pray, God, that you will continue to anoint this service. You anoint my lips. Your word is already anointed. And God, let it go forth today. Give them ears to hear your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Everybody said amen. You may be seated. You see, if there's anyone in this room, though, that would like to bypass and hurry up to 2020, it's my wife and I. 
It's my wife and I. As many of you know, we just moved into a house. I became Father Abraham this year with many sons and daughters. It's been a year. I'll never, ever forget 2019. (laughs) Woo! I'll never forget 2019. We just moved into a house for the first time, all six of us as a family and Manny. And so we have a big house. We lived for 17 years in the same house. And what got into us to move, I don't know. I can't remember that, honey. I, somehow, was it me? She says it was me. I don't know. But, but I don't know. But I'd be lying if I didn't tell you it was hard. It was a hard process. I've never had a moving experience that was quite this challenging. It was exhausting. I don't know if it's just me getting older or having a pregnant lady in the house. I'm not sure. (laughs) Maybe both. But it just seemed like problem after problem kept coming up. Things I didn't even realize that were obstacles became obstacles. Nothing was easy. Everything costs money. You start building a house, everything is itemized. Lord, have mercy. Paying for your trash every trash run. Crazy, the things that you have to do that you didn't plan for. You see, we were all about checks and balances and checklists and making sure we did every due diligence that we could possible, and we took our time with the process. But even then, things still happened. But then the house was done, and everything was set up, and the work paid off. We were able to have Christmas in our house this year, and it was very satisfying. The week or two leading up to it wasn't, but... but <laughs> It was satisfying that day that we could have family in our home. And although we are very grateful for the times that we were in transition, it was hard. Have you ever noticed how nothing worth having comes easy? And the best experiences and moments usually happen outside your comfort zone. Many of you know this. Theodore Roosevelt said, it this way. Nothing in the world is worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain, difficulty. I have never in my life envied a man being who led an easy life. But I have envied a great many of people who led difficult lives and led them well. I think we can all agree with that. Life is not easy. Just like we didn't Going into our house, we didn't expect every problem that came. We knew there would be some challenges, but there was a lot of things that came at us from every angle that we did not know, we did not see, that we thought we were prepared for. As I know, none of you showed up here today at TLC hoping, praying, and longing for someone to sing something, pray something, or preach something that would strip all your hope away. Right? You came here to be encouraged, not discouraged. You came here to hear hope. You came here to seek God for more and a greater direction in your life and greater things in Lord, in your Lord. We came here looking for guidance for a deeper walk with God. We're going to dive into Paul's life and Paul's teachings this morning. And my text is coming from the King James Version of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter and the 16th verse. And I want to focus on the first part of that verse. When Paul tells the church in Corinth, for which cause we faint not. For which cause we 
faint not. You see here, Paul is trying to encourage the Corinthian church not to lose heart. In times of affliction, the word faint here, it refers to a failing heart. So the phrase could be read this way. We do not lose heart. Paul is telling us that regardless of, Whatever comes our way, whatever trial, whatever circumstance comes my way, I will not faint. I will not give up. I will stay the course. But you know, it's easy to lose heart, isn't it? It's easy to lose heart. Let's be honest. Let's be real. It's the end of the year 2019. And it's been a very rough one for many in this room. Can I get an amen? It's been a rough one. It's so easy to come to a place where you're ready to throw in the towel, where you're ready to give up, where you're ready to say, I can't go anymore. Even when we're ready for, just like I said with my house, We do all the checklists, we do all the balances, we do all the things that we know. We put everything in perspective of what we think is going to come. But life still happens. Things we never thought we would battle through. We battle them, we fight for them, we do what we can because we're in it to win it. So I want to read about Paul's life for a second in 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 27. Long passage of scripture here, but I want you to read with me here. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the 40 lashes Less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness. Danger in the sea, danger from false brothers. Mm. In toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. And apart from other things, there is daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is made to fall? And I am not indignant. I'm not here to compare anybody's life to Paul's life. But I'm also not in no way diminishing your problems. But I think most of us in this room can say we don't quite have it as bad as Paul did. And what Paul went through. But yet in spite of all those trials... In spite of every tribulation, every burden he bared, Paul is able to say, I never, ever lose heart. And as much as I'd like to be like Paul, I'd like to be that way. I'd love to sit up here today and tell you, yep, that's going to be me. I find myself sometimes more like David. In Psalms 55 and 6, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Maybe it's some four kiddos I got at home that makes me feel that way sometimes. (laughs) I'll get that one later. But if we're honest, we all have to admit that we feel that way at times, right? Right? We just want to go away from our problem. We want to run away from it. Just get it out of my head for a while. 
And that's at where you're at most risk is when you're running away. Hmm. I'm going to be transparent with you this morning. I've dealt with this very problem. I've dealt with this problem for 20 years. I have ran away from the ministry for many years. I have revealed that to this church before. But I have had a problem running from God and what he wanted to do for my life. Because I didn't think I wanted to give everything I had to give for it. I didn't want to make the sacrifices. I like where I'm at. God, I don't want to go and endure this season and this time. You see, I understand that sometimes leaving troubles and afflictions behind seems like the best option. Seems like it is. But I'm far more interested in reaching that place where I can say what Paul said. I faint not. I faint not. I will not lose heart. I've come here to tell you today from my heart, God does not want you to faint. I'm speaking to somebody in this place that has been tempted to give up. That God's got a plan for you. He's laid it out in front of you what you need to do. But as 2020 approaches, instead of running from every problem these last few days, you need to stand up and say, God, prepare me for what you want. Prepare me for where you're taking me. Prepare my heart. Let me do the sacrifices. I'm willing. I will not faint. I will not run. I will face what you have for me. Paul tells us in the next part of our text In verse 16, he says, Though our outward man perish. Now this is good stuff. Many of you have heard this before, but we need to be reminded of this. The reason it's so easy for us to lose heart is that our outer man is perishing. Our outer man is perishing. We have all this thing called flesh All of us have flesh that we deal with daily. No matter how holy you think you are, no matter how caught up you think you are with Jesus, until that body turns from mortal to immortal in that perfect body, you're always going to deal with your flesh. You're always going to deal with your flesh. The reason we lose heart is because our flesh, it's our flesh, our outer man, It's perishing. It's being destroyed by pain, problems, and trials. This destruction of our outer man comes from two sources. First, the fallen nature. This is the curse of pain and suffering, corruption and death in this world because of sin. Romans 8, 22 and 23 It says, for we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we await eagerly. (laughs) For adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. Praise God, church. One day we will be resurrected with glorified bodies. Every pain, every suffering that we've gone through, every bad news that we get from the doctor, every problem, every trial, every marriage, every financial issue, burdens, and stress, it will be gone because we will be caught up with glorified bodies. There is hope. Faint not. Do not lose heart. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7 reminds us that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. 
That is, we all live out our days in fragile jars of clay. One day the vessel will crack, it will break, and it will fade away. That is the nature of life. I'm so glad this is not my home. I'm so glad it's not my home. We just built a new home, and we're so blessed, and we're so thankful for our home, but that's nothing compared to where God is going to take us, where we're headed to our heavenly home. When we put on immortal bodies, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The second thing that causes us to lose heart is fallen men. Fallen men. If nature doesn't get you, fallen men will. Fallen people will let us down. Fallen people will let us down. Fallen people will hurt your feelings. Fallen people hurt us physically, verbally, and emotionally, and spiritually. And this can cause us to lose heart. Yet Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 10, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, Struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. We don't have to give up. There's nobody here telling you, you might as well give up. There's hope here today. You don't have to become a statistic. You don't have to become a statistic. You don't have to be one of those people who used to walk with God. I've been there. Yeah, I used to go to church. I used to go. I used to listen to preaching. I used to listen to this. I used to listen. I used to fellowship with people. I can reach a place. You can reach a place when you say, God, I will faint not. I'm going to take it one step at a time, and I'm going to trust God. I'm going to get my eyes fixed on him. I will not faint. When I'm attacked by this fallen nature, I will not lose heart. No matter what trial is going on around me, I will not I know some of you are looking at me right now and going, Daryl, we heard this, we know, but it's still, you don't know my situation. I get it. I felt that. I feel it. But I haven't given you everything yet. Go back to our original text in verse 16. The last part of that says, yet inward man is renewed day by day. So while the outward man is perishing day by day, dying a little, experiencing heartbreak, problems, sorrow, groaning weaker and nearer to death, the inward man is renewed by Jesus Christ, by everything that you have put into it, the word of God, the prayer and the fasting, it is renewed daily. Jesus said it this way, therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Planning for tomorrow is time well spent. But I want you to hear me some. I want you to hear me right now. Planning for tomorrow is time well spent. But worrying about tomorrow is wasted time. If you are a worrier, it's wasting your time. 
It's taken away from your time with God. It's taken away being renewed by God. Planning well can alleviate that worry. I believe that. Worriers, by contrast, are consumed by fear and find it difficult to trust God. But don't let your worries about tomorrow affect your relationship with God today. Don't let it affect your relationship today. It's wasting your time. One of God's promises and limitations, 3 and verse 21 through 26, it reads this way, But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those that wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly. For the salvation of the Lord, no matter what surrounded Jeremiah in this scripture, no matter what surrounded him, he found one ray of hope in all of the sin. He found ray of hope in all of the sorrow that was surrounding him. The faithful love of the Lord never fails and it never runs dry. He's always faithful. He's always faithful. God tells us if we depend on him while our outer man grows weaker and weaker, he will renew your inner man. If you're struggling with pain right now, you're struggling with some sort of a disease, don't worry. Your inner man, your inner man is being renewed. This is not your home. You're just passing through. You're just passing through to reach the glory of God, to reach the heavenly home. But we're, there's something here that we need to understand about God's strength. It's not something that we can say for a rainy day or when we want to use it, it's there. It's not something that we can borrow for tomorrow. It's like a leaky bucket. What strength brought you up from the trial yesterday will not be sufficient for the trials you face today. Your trials that you had tomorrow, you're going at it. You're reaching God. You're getting renewed. God's strength will cover them. But today, you've got a new day. You've got to press forward. You've got to be renewed today. Paul said to die daily. Die daily. And my flesh and my desires, I'm going to die to my flesh. We go from grace to grace and mercy to mercy and altar to altar. You've heard pastor preach on altar to altar. You need the word of God every day in your life. If you're not at home reading the word of God on your knees, I'm telling you, church, you've got to start there. It don't depend on a Sunday. Don't depend on a Wednesday or a Sunday school class. Get on your knees at your house with your children and ask God to renew your strength and renew your inward man. You need to pray. You need godly fellowship, church. The unity of this church is amazing. I love to see the people of this church going out and fellowshipping together, whether it be here at the service or whether it be outside of event or just someone calling on you to come to the house. That's what it's all about. We need the fellowship. Going to church once a week or just when we feel like it does not work. It does not work. doesn't cut it. You need a fresh supply. You need a fresh anointing. If we're not investing in the renewing of the inner man day by day, how can we expect to not lose heart? Nothing we face in this life will last forever. Nothing we face 
will last forever. 2 Corinthians 4 and 17 says, For our light and our momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. It far outweighs them all. I know it doesn't feel that way when trials come. I know some of us don't like to describe our trials as light and easy, and they certainly don't feel temporary. But Paul is trying to say to us here, the problems of life that seem so heavy right now, the troubles that seem that they will never end, the burdens that we carry, they're only for just a moment. They're only heavy for just a moment. What is long to you, to God, is not. This is not our home. We must not faint. We must not stop believing. We've got to keep on keeping on. We've got to push through and press on. We've got to encourage our brother, encourage our sister, encourage our children, because God is coming back for a bride that is ready. God's coming back for a bride that's ready. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Romans 8 and 18 says, For I consider that sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed in us. He tells us that compared to the eternal weight of glory that we will experience, that we will experience when we arrive home in heaven, everything we face here is light and easy. The glory weighs far above what we face here on this earth. Everything in this world is just temporary. We're just passing through. And what Paul is trying to get to see here, us to see, is that we need to focus on what's eternal and not temporary. Don't get me wrong. Listen, don't get me wrong because I don't want anybody to walk out of this place tonight and say everything that you're doing right now to better yourself, better your family is wrong. That's not the case. Planning is good. Structure is good. But there's more to it than what we have here in front of us right now. There's more attainable glory waiting for us on, on heaven I'm telling you, God is coming back, church. I can't stress that enough. At some point, at some point, those clouds are going to split in that eastern sky. That trumpet will sound. And whether you're ready or not, those that are ready will be called to meet him in the air. Like it or not, we must not faint. We cannot give up. There's people in this place right now that are dealing with a ministry and a calling. God brought names to my mind when I was praying last night. He brought people to my mind. And there's people in this place right now that God's calling you to a higher calling. God's trying to get you to prepare God's trying to get you to prepare for what he wants from you. But God gave us a power to choose. You see, he's a gentleman. He's not going to force you to do anything. That doesn't, that's not how it works. He gives you the power to choose how you're going to live your life. He can paint the picture for you. He can encourage you. He can send people to you and encourage you, and read the word of God, and give you a word of encouragement. But unless you take that step, unless you take that step, it's not going to happen. We just want God to say, poof, and it be done. I want to bypass the struggle. I want to bypass all the pain and the suffering and the sacrifice doesn't work that way. I hate to break it to you today, but God's purpose in saving you is not to make you happy. And I'm going to tell you right now, and being transparent, this hit me hard. 
This hit me hard. His purpose in saving you is not to make you happy. And it's not to bless you. It's not to guarantee you any bed of roses. But every trial we face, every fire we walk through, he's molding us. He's shaping us to be more like him. He's shaping us to be more like him. But we have to let him. We have to let him shape us. Are you willing? Are you willing to fight through your troubles, through your problems, through your issues? Listen, we've got people in this church that are going through things right now that are unthinkable. And last night, as I don't pray, and I just ask God, God, please let this go forth. Let your word go forth. Let there be understanding and give them ears to receive because I am not making light of any problems today. I'm just telling you where you can draw your strength from. I'm telling you where you can go when you've got problems. I'm telling you not to give up when your problems are facing your your life and your, your health. I'm telling you don't faint. We must get our eyes on God. Audra, come on back. True worship. We must get our eyes on God. So when the health scare comes and you've been diagnosed, I want to encourage you today. It's not meaningless. When your loved one dies, it's not meaningless. Church, when you're struggling in your marriage and you're fighting for your marriage and you're in there, it's not meaningless. There's something to fight for. There's something to hold on to. There's something to go to God about and say, God, I need more of you. It's not meaningless. Parents, when you're struggling with your children and their decisions that they're making, And they're not the decisions that you would make. And it's not what you had in mind for them. Seek God. Because it's not meaningless. It's not meaningless. There's a purpose because God's going to take them through some things. God's going to shape them and mold them through it. But I believe God and all those children, and I have my own kids, that are going to come through those doors and they're going to be delivered and they're going to have the hand of God upon their life. It's not meaningless, parents. Don't give up. Don't faint. Don't faint. Though weeping may endure for a night, joy cometh in the morning. Mm. Are you ready to fight? I'm telling you, all of you can look at me right now and say you don't understand. But I'm telling you, God's talking to you right now. Are you willing to fight for what God is going to do through you? What he wants to do through you this year, are you willing to fight? Stand with me. We need to step back, church. We need to change some perspective in our home. We need to change some perspective in our marriages. We need to change some perspective with our children. We need to start getting eternally focused on what God is going to do. God has put a church in Joshua, Texas. Last week we had 280-something people in this room. In three years... I'm telling you, church, God is not finished in Joshua, Texas. God is not finished in your life. It starts with you. I'm going to ask you today to be the change that you want God to see in this church. 
Let it start with you today. Let me tell you something. I felt sorry for myself for a long time. I did. My poor wife. I thank God for you. I do. I thank God for you. That woman has been my rock at home for years. Encourage me when I did not want to be encouraged, when I didn't want to hear what she had to say. But she stood firm and she said, I'm not going to faint because I know the calling that God's placed on your life. Someone has to stand in for someone. You say, well, you got it all together, but somebody in your family, somebody in this room may not. I thank God that she stood by my side and she went to God in prayer for me. I want everybody just to close their eyes right now. I wonder for just a few moments in this service and in these last few days of 2019, if we can ask God to help change our perspective. We must ask God to prepare us in these last days for what's coming in 2020 and in this church. So let me ask you this one question as you right now are in prayer where you are. Before we come up to this altar, I want to ask you one question. What are you ready to give God today in exchange for his strength? What are you ready to give God today? I want you to answer that right now to God. God, I'm ready. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight my battles. I'm ready to fight every issue that comes my way. That trial that you're facing right now, what are you willing to give up in exchange for God's mercy, in exchange for God's strength? Can you make that commitment today? Are you willing to fight and not lose heart? Where do you fight? Well, I'm going to let you in right now. If you'll take a step of faith and move to this altar right now and don't let anybody stop you. If you'll just make your way up here as we begin to sing. I'm going to help you right now. If you'll take that step of faith, you will fight right down here at this altar. If you've got a family member that you know that needs a touch of God, that needs healing or needs the Holy Ghost, I want you to begin to walk this altar and I want you to fight on your knees right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, church. It's not about you. It's this not about you. My this is where you do it, right down here. This is how I fight my battles. Hallelujah. Come on, make your way down here. There are this people down here that's got battles. battles. We're an army of God that's going to surround one another right now. This is how I fight my battles. We're going to fight together. Hallelujah. This is how I fight my battle. Oh, yes, Jesus. We're going to fight right now in the name of the Lord. This is right how now, I, fight my I rebuke battles. the enemy in the name of Jesus. Every barrier, every chain, this is I ask you to loose it battle. in the name of the Lord. I ask you to loose it in the name of Jesus. This is On your authority. On your authority right now, God. Hallelujah. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It 
may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded. By you. Okay, church. You've got your marching orders. Now, right now, I want to know if your faith is strong. If you're dealing with a situation, you don't have to tell us what it is, but right now, I want to know if you want to come to the front of this altar and you want to take a stand right now and you want to open up your heart and your mind to God. And say, God, I will not lose heart any longer. God, I will not run any longer. If you have somebody you want to step in, somebody that needs hope, that needs deliverance, I want you to step in for them right down here. I want you just to make a line. Come on, this line should be long if we're stepping in for someone. If you believe it today, I want you to believe it for someone. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just make a line right up here. Just make a line right up here. Now we're going to sing this again. But let me tell you something. The battle has already been won. The battle has already been won. All he's waiting on you to do is to receive that word. Can you receive that word today? I want you to lift your hands right now and I want you to receive that God has already run the battle. That the victory is yours today. In Jesus' name. The victory is yours today. In Jesus' name. This is our battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight. how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 Oh, yes. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm Like I'm so 
church it's 1203 and I know it's running late but I feel impressed by the Lord one more thing that I want to do and this includes the platform I want everybody that has family here I want you to get around your family right now I want you to get around your family I want you to get around your family Audra Josh can come up here with you all of you singers go ahead we don't need singing to reach the throne of God. I want you to find your family, kids. I want you to get around your parents. Hallelujah. This is how we fight right here. If you don't have family here, I want you to reach out to someone that has that's next to you. I want you to reach out to someone that's by themselves right now. I want you to reach out to them. Come on, we're going to start this together. We're going to come together. We're going to close out this year together as a family and as a church body. said he's not going to fight anymore. He's not going to fight it anymore. He's not going to fight that anymore. He's going to give it all to God. He's going to give it all to God. Now, before we start praying, I just want to make something clear. You know, we can get in a service like this and have that good music and we want to fight. But when you walk out this door, what happens? The enemy's going to attack. you got to keep fighting every day. You got a brother and sister in here, you want to make a phone call, make a phone call. You want to call one of the pastoral staff, call them. We'll pray with you. We'll seek with you. We'll do whatever we got to do with you. But we're a family here today. We're one body here today. And we're going to be behind one another. Going into 2020, we're going to be behind each other. Right now, I want you just to pray with your families. We're going to pray together. And I want you to fight together. I want this to be beginning of the fight for your family, for your children, for any lost loved ones that are in your house, that are in your extended family. I want you to pray right now that you cover your homes with the anointing, with the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, God, I cover, I cover this family, God. I cover every family in the name of Jesus in this church. Oh, break every chain. Break every chain. Every hurt feeling. God, I pray, Lord, there be better communication right now. Lord, I pray for every marriage in this house. Lord, I pray for every marriage in this place. Oh, let there be a new beginning in you, God. Let there be a new beginning in you, Lord. Lord, I pray for every child, every young person. Lord, I pray that 2020, God, that there will be a year that we will fight and we will not lose heart. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for every parent. I thank you for every elder. I thank you for every mom and dad. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, we stand together today in unity in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I just want you to thank him right now. I just want you to thank him. Lift your hands all over this place and thank the Lord for what he's doing, what he's going to do in your life. Church, I want you to thank him. I want you to thank him from the bottom of your heart. Hallelujah. We're not going to hide anymore. We're not going to run anymore. Hallelujah. Praise God. God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. I look around and see so many great people, so many great families. You all work so hard in the kingdom and outside of the kingdom. Don't lose heart. Don't faint. Don't faint. Speak encouraging words. Speak love. Open up the word. Have prayer time with your family. When you tuck in your kids, read some scriptures. Encourage them. Don't faint. Lord, I thank you for the word. I thank you for what we feel in this place. I thank you for what we feel in this place. God, I ask you to go with these people, these great people, God. God, we made a commitment today. Lord, I pray over those that took a stand. I thank you for those that took a stand today. Oh, God, I ask you to go with them every day. Every day. Let them do your work. Let them do your will. God, let it be used for your glory. Let there be a testimony, God, from this house. We thank you, God. Keep them safe. Bless every family here as we go today. We love you and we thank you. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You're dismissed. You're dismissed. Don't forget about Tuesday night. And if you want to cook chili, go sign up. We need chili.